So I took a big shit on Ebony Maw the, the other day. And now we're here to test him out with an Obelisk at level 70 and level 80. Uh, see what he can do, if anything, and then go from there. Now the rotation is pretty straightforward. It's uh, 3 cancel, 1 cancel, 2 cancel, 3 cancel, 4. And then you proc, and then you do the same, almost the same thing. You do uh, 5, sorry, did I say 3 cancel? 5, five cancel. Um, and then you do 5, 1, 2, 4, 6. So basically you, you cancel everything into 6. And then you cancel everything into four or cancel everything into four and then cancel everything into six and you just alternate between those two um procking on six uh, procking on four and then procking on six as you can see he's very very proc friendly he has lots of delay on his hits which is very very nice he also just has a really gorgeous looking uh tier three ability so you get to see that which is nice because you can't really you can you can like delay cancel it which is something but yeah it's not really going to work too well but yeah 200 proc obelisk and as you can see he can handle this stage um it's gonna be very tight and we're not gonna do the whole run here but i just wanted to cover his rotation first so you guys can see it uh, and just talk about some things here uh and then go from there with a little bit more difficult content once we can actually push him up to um to 80. so there you go he can actually do 75. now it's gonna be tight for sure it's gonna be tight i know you've heard that before uh, but he could probably do 75 he probably can't go higher than 75 against no for my roster for my build for what i've got um, but keep in mind look on the team here it's valkyrie support with the artifact and it is um enchantress i want to point out enchantress specifically not because it's a it's a paywall uniform it's not a paywall uniform um but okay of course valkyrie we have to point her out because yeah you got the artifact but then enchantress we got to point her out because you do want the newest art the newest uniform because it gives all allies 30 percent mind damage and that, on top of her other passive, with the 20% attack and the 40% boss type damage, is very strong. So you can't just say, okay, I'm going to replace her with, with Ronin and get the same results. Ebony does full mind damage, so you're not going to get the same results at all. Enchantress is by far the best support in the game offensively for Ebony Maw. So that's something you should consider if you're going to pick up this uniform. Um, consider whether you have Enchantress Tier 3 and whether you have her newest uniform. Not the paywall one, the, the newest uniform. But yeah, the rest of the build is pretty straightforward. We have this shit going on right here. Whatever, it's ugly. It's, you know, not symmetrical. I know it is what it is. We have actually, we have Overdrive, not Power of Angry Hulk, which is a little cringe because I'm not capped on attack speed. So things could actually be smoother. I'm actually not capped on any of the important skills, but we're not off. Like, we're only 11% off on crit damage. It's not too far off, right? You can still get a, a good feel for what he does. Um, I have this artifact from a long time ago. It's just a generic artifact. Um, it's not his his artifact, obviously. And then, yeah, it was an Ignore Dodge 200 proc obelisk, which is quite nice. Now, I'm going to show you guys one more showcase here before we take him to 80. Remember a couple weeks ago, we talked about Black Swan against stage 35 of uh, Gore. Well, this is the same thing, except it is Ebony versus 35 of Gore. Same sort of thing. So if you have an opinion on um, Black Swan's damage. Wow, where is my proc at, dude? That's super delayed. That's crazy. Um, if you if you liked, for example, if you liked Black Swan's damage, then you can compare it. Obviously, uh, if I mean if he ends up being comparable to her, you can compare uh, his damage to her. So that's another way for you to know whether this uniform, um, from an offensive point of view, right, from an offensive standalone DPS point of view, if this is sort of the uniform for you, because of course it has gorgeous aesthetics. It's got gorgeous animations with the puppet hands and stuff like that. Doctor Strange coming out, the giant blue eyes, like. For sure, visually, this uniform is a big, a big win, um, you know, and, and a big upgrade over the old uniform. But I think more than that, people want to know, you know, how good is it? I want to check out the AOE here. It's not bad. It doesn't quite cover the screen unless I was more in the middle. If I had a target, a middle facing target without a middle facing target, um, it'll be difficult to hit all of them. It's not quite as big as like Doctor Strange, but it is still bigger than a lot of other characters. Uh, OK, we're stuck in animations here, which is unfortunate in a bunch of animations but let's see if we can hit not really hitting that guy there which is a bit of a problem there we go okay we got it gonna pop off here not bad get right back into a rotation yeah i, I do like how how short his cooldowns are and i do like how um, easy he is to proc it's very very simple he's easily a 10 out of 10 for proc friendliness um you know it's 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 like you have to be bad or you have to be trying to miss to miss a proc which is nice um now again for some people this damage is good enough for others it's not i i do again want to highlight four star valkyrie artifact and enchantress 
Enchantress, I think, is a bigger one because of how much, like I said, the synergy she provides with the mind damage and all the other stuff. Um, it's it's huge and it's hard to beat. Um, but then you also have to take into consideration the fact that we're talking about a native tier two. I missed a proc. That's the first proc I missed. Wow. I actually missed that proc. I didn't realize I was going to have my tier three up. So I miscalculated the timing and I paused on the um, the fourth skill. But yeah, that's the only proc I'm going to miss in this video, I guess, um, because he's just that that uh, easy to play. But um, yeah, I think you have to, you know, for, for Black Swan, like she's a very unique character. Of course, she's native tier three. She's even more expensive than Ebony. But it's something to consider because, you know, people forget he's native tier two, right? And so he is an expensive character in his own right. And yeah, he's pretty tanky here. Um, yeah, he's he's doing pretty well. But at the same time, he's very expensive. And on top of that, unlike Black Swan, you have to buy the uniform. So yeah, we're not gonna do the whole run here, but you can see he does he does the fight where he's got more than two minutes left, which means he can clear this. So yeah, I would put his power level at level 70 around the power level offensively for like world boss content, for the sort of like PvE content around the level of Black Swan. That might be good for some people, that might not be good for other people. Also keep in mind, that was a technically a triple support run. Some people don't like it when I mention this because it's like, I can't take away his support. And I know that I'm not trying to deduct points, but I'm just saying, he's doing as much damage as black swan with more help than black swan had if that makes sense because black swan just had the leadership and the one support and then whatever she's bringing to the table but he has valkyrie support and enchanter support and his own leadership and his own passive because that 40 percent increased damage of course applies to universal uh, enemies which gore is universal null is universal everybody but um mephisto and black swan are universal so Again, for what it's worth, right, if, if there was a way to test raw damage, I would guess that he has less raw damage at level 70, of course, at level 70. He has less raw damage than Black Swan. Because if there was a way to simulate a fight um, with Black Swan where she had, and again, this is just in this vacuum that I've created, right, um, where she had exactly the same amount of supports as he did, or just playing him with one less support, right, which is would be a dumb thing to do, but you could do it that way. Um, then she would come out on top if that makes sense so yeah it, anyways for what it's worth it doesn't really matter too much let me just wrap this up real quick and then we'll get to the level 80 testing just as a brief little test let's see how he does that same stage here oh okay so yeah it's uh it's a little bit faster yeah kind of hard to tell but it's a little bit faster okay mm-hmm mm -hmm. yeah i think part, <laughs> part of this of course goes to the fact that gore got nerfed um this is but this is pretty crazy like this used to be i don't want to say hard but this used to be like a bit of a milestone for level 80s um it's not it's not i also missed pressing the first skill which makes me sad uh, i kind of goofed that one up i'm actually not gonna press the tier three because we don't even need the damage yeah so that went from two minutes and 20 seconds left to four minutes and 20 seconds left yeah that's really fast what can i say that's really fast but that's a very easy stage Let's actually put him up against a hard stage. This might be a stretch, but let's see at level 80 if he can do stage 35 of Kang. If he can do this one, then we might have a different conversation on our hands. First proc, not too great. It was super delayed. Let's see how the next one goes here. All right. The damage is something, but also not very good. Okay, that proc was much more on time to sort of layer all the damage together. But yeah, it's looking like... Uh, looking like this isn't going to work out for him i mean he's tanky he's definitely tanky um he's tanky enough to take all those hits and then heal right back up because he has two uh heal skills right and he's got that damage reduction against uh villains so or sorry against uh universals so that does well but yeah the damage is nowhere near high enough to even even consider like he, he's not even coming close to uh to denting this stage lastly for what it's worth this is stage 84 of ultron so this is a very high stage but it is for a boss that was recently nerfed so i'm, I'm not really happy with this uh this stage as a measure of test but i'm also doing it and that's also why i mentioned gene earlier before we did kang um ebony's not actually available for that many stages so that is something to consider as well i'll show you guys the breakdown with the list um in just a minute here but that is something you always want to consider when you're looking at the um, PVE potential, not like non-ABX ABL, right? The non-ABX ABL potential of a character is where can you really use them, right? What stages are they going to help you push? What bosses are they going to be buffing? You know, 
Of course, Ebony is still good as a lead slash support for all of the bosses except Mephisto and uh, Black Swan. But then again, you don't need, right, as we've highlighted, you do not need this uniform for that because it's only a 5% difference. So it's it's almost, the, I mean, I think the leadership is 10% now. They buffed it um, from 40 to 50. But um, yeah, you're not, you're not paying 1,000 crystals for 10% energy attack and 5% uh, of a buff, right? You're, you're certainly not doing that. That, that, would be, um, that would be silly. So yeah, I think, oh, I missed a proc there. So wow, I said I wasn't going to miss a proc for the rest of the video, and I was wrong. That's crazy. So yeah, we did miss a, another proc there, but it's, it's very difficult. And as you can see, he can crush this stage, which is cool. But to be fair, we, all, we already have a lot of um, you know, alien villains who can. Hela can crush this stage. Thanos can crush this stage. I think Loki 80 can. I'm not 100% sure, though. Um, but yeah, he does this easily. Easily. With a very pedestrian build. And of course, that uh, classic 200 proc obelisk that I have using, uh, you know, just just the regular means here. So, okay, yeah. I don't want to play this whole, out, this whole thing out. Fine. This is whatever. So that pretty much does it for my PvE review of Ebony Maw. I think he's decent. I certainly think that some accounts could make use of him and obviously diehard fans will want to use him as as much as possible so i wanted to highlight where you can use him and how you can use him at least insofar as i test tested but you know beyond this i really don't think he has any chance of competing with magneto for abx abl and then you know getting him for something like gbr is quite silly although he has a little bit more value than other blast tier fours because he'll be useful on his own on his own combat day because he'll have a type advantage and then he'll also be useful on the other day um, when uh, Dormammu becomes uh, universal. So it, it's a tiny bit more value, but I'm not, you know, you'd have to tier four him, you'd have to give him a rage. It'd be like a whole silly procession. As far as PvP goes, I don't know if I'm going to do a video on him. I'll certainly have to test him first. I'll have to sort of uh, scrub up this build a little bit and uh, obviously give him a CTP. Uh, that'll probably have to wait until the anniversary because I'm pretty much out of pvp ctps as you can see here like i would love to give him a mighty authority or something like that to test him i've heard mixed results from pvp i'm not gonna lie to you um but i haven't heard anything definitively good like i've heard some people disappointed i've heard some people pleasantly surprised but pleasantly surprised doesn't mean good it just it could mean that your expectations were zero and they ended up being one better than that you know and obviously if your expectations were exceeded then you're gonna be like wow the character's so good or not whoa so good but like you're gonna feel you know pleasantly surprised so yeah, I've, I mean, I've heard him get one shot and I've heard him one shot. So it could be like a, a situation of a glass cannon type thing. But these days, when you're telling me that there's a native tier two or native tier three for that matter, that has no revive, no um, immortality and no iframe ignore, I basically would not, you know, I'm, I'm, it's very difficult to believe that this character has any chance to succeed uh, in anything other than you know, middling tier AC content. And at this point in the game, you're not investing and you're not tier fouring a character for middling AC content, unless you're like an AC head, in which case you should probably watch other channels as we've discussed. <laughs> Anyways, boys, hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of Ebony Ma. Thanks so much for watching the video. Smash the like button if you enjoy the content and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.